guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Text. In today's video, we're working on my brand new 2022 Winnebago 2801 and we're gonna be working on all the kitchen accessories that I need. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around and see what I'm working on. And if that doesn't sound interesting, sorry, maybe next video will be more interesting for you. So let's take a closer look at the kitchen to see where we're starting. Unfortunately, Winnebago got rid of the ovens on most of their campus, the mini and the micro mini. We use it all the time, so maybe I'll cut that out and put an oven in there one day. Probably won't, but you never know. And then we've got this nice little L-shaped design. We've got the big sink. On my previous camper, we had two separate sinks. We have the bigger fridge which is electric. I didn't want an electric fridge. I wanted a propane electric fridge, but this will do because we're putting a lot of solar in here. Microwave convection oven, but overall, this is a great kitchen, but needs some accessories. So let's look at the accessories we're adding. So one thing I always recommend is you get a paper towel holder. This paper towel holder I have in my other camper, but it is uh, like a clicky system here. So you can pull off a piece of paper towel with one hand. Then I have my spiced racks. We'll put those in the cupboard, some spices. A drip tray for the hand sponges, a drip tray for dishes, utensils, and the most important thing is a triple water filtration system. Also, if you didn't see my bunkhouse upgrades, I need to install a handle here, right over here. So we will be doing that too. And then of course, we got a nice little mat, live, love, camp. That's going right there. So in this video, I'm gonna start with the easiest and progress to the most difficult and time consuming, which will be the water filtration system, the last. So first up, we have the paper towel holder. Now, I love this one because as I mentioned, it has a clicky system, so you're able to pull off a paper towel with one hand, must need. And then also when you're driving down the road, it doesn't just unravel the paper towel. You do have to uh, drill holes in the wall of your camper, wherever you mount this. So keep that in mind. But I'm going to install this. So I am going to install this right here. Keep in mind, if you install it like this, you're going to have trouble because you won't be able to get the paper towel off. That's where I go. It does come with the screws, but let me just check with the paper towel on here, how high I want to go. Obviously I want it higher than not, so it's out of the way. So that looks about good. I'm gonna take a measurement and we'll get drilling. About four and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pre-drill and then we will silicone the screws as well. So this is just an easy way to do it. Then I can see where four and a half inches goes. Four and a half inches right there. This looks good. So if you watch my bathroom video, the some of the bathroom accessories came with silicone and it's always nice to do all the accessories at once so you can keep the stuff. So just a tip, now I still have some silicone instead of running to the hardware store and buying some. Okay, so that looks good. What I'm also going to do to give more strength to this is I'm gonna put some silicone on the back of the actual plate. Now, I can't find a stud here. I didn't look either. I'm not worried. I didn't find a stud before and it worked out fine. Time will tell. Obviously, if you can't find a stud, it is better. So just keep that in mind. Now, when you're screwing in things and you don't have a stud, you don't wanna over tighten it because whatever it's bit onto the wall, the styrofoam, whatever, if you spin it too much, it'll strip all of that out. Then your holes rendered useless. But that is glued, siliconed, and we screwed into this plastic as well as this wood behind you. So I think it's all good. I'm gonna let that dry before I put the paper towel on there. Alrighty, these are pretty straightforward accessories, no modification or drilling needed, but let's open it up and I'll show you what we're working with. Well, the camera's pretty low. Now guys, if you want to purchase anything that you see in this video, all the links are down below. Um, but let's check out if these things will work out. So my wife didn't want this. I took the risk of getting it to see because she always has the dish sponges and whatever here. But maybe it's a bit redundant. What I like about this, this is where we can leave our plates to dry. But also, if we need the sink, we can move it here and still let all the plates to dry. There's a drain hole you can plug, and then that's where the water comes out. But it does do a good job of fitting in here. I don't know if this will work. But we can have one side there. If I trim this, I don't think I will. We never use these on another camper. They just 
a waste of space. But anyways, that's how it looks. On to the next thing. You know what, I'm actually gonna take a Zacto knife and cut all of these out so it actually fits correctly, and then it will fit better, I believe. So that is all cut, and it fits better now. Now, if you wanna know if that's good or not, keep watching all my series, and if you'll see it in the background, we like it. On to the next thing, which will be the kitchen utensils. We don't have any, so that's just a nice set, and then we'll do the spices. So, I'll show you this color here. This is a weird color. Not a fan of it, but really we're going for the utility of these. And I wanted something with a cup holder, so that's good. We probably won't use all of these, but it was cheap and nice to have in the RV so we don't have to bring them back and forth from our kitchen. So reasons I chose this one is look at all the utensils. It came with the holding container. Now, we're not gonna keep all the utensils. We all sort that out. Well, let's say my wife is the cook. So she will sort out what she needs or not. Then we'll leave the rest. There's no reason I'm carrying everything. But when we travel, this will just go in here, right? That's how we travel. That's why these things are pointless for us. Cause as you know, I move every night, but this is where they will live when we get to the destination. So what we have here are these uh, spice racks. You can break it down to a set of two or four or three. It looks like four works here. So I'm gonna stick one up, then I'm gonna open the spices, then we'll see where the next row goes down. All right, so the double-sided tape on here seems to be way strong enough. So once you have it on, just push it on and then you're good to go. So these are designed for the McCormick bottles. Uh, so, you know, these are sold everywhere. That's why I went with these. I didn't want the nice towers that, you know, if you run out of a spice, you gotta decant them. I just wanted something I could grab and go. And they also work for the gloss ones. So the gloss ones are a different shape, but they do work. So I will measure them out for both of them. Now we're all done here. Let's check it out. Nice and easy to reach. Yeah, we got it. And then this will be like cinnamon and all the other random stuff that you don't use much. But that is perfect. Something to note is these do come with screws. I think I used them on my last camper. I don't think they needed this double-sided tape. Seems absolutely perfect, but you can use them. So I'm not gonna, and I'll keep you updated if they fall. So something I wanna talk about, these are child safety latches. So I haven't had an issue with this fridge popping open. My other fridge popped open a couple times when we were driving. This is just something uh, you might wanna add. Obviously this one may be a bit weird, but these I use in my household freezer. We have a freezer just for all of our meat. We buy meat by the cow, and one day my wife didn't close the door properly, and you know, that wasn't good. So we make sure this is a habit to latch these. So these work perfect. So if you wanted that, you could use that. I'm not gonna use it yet, but that's something to consider. Now, before I start drilling holes for this, I'm gonna open this vacuum I purchased. Uh, that way I have something to clean up the mess and it can charge while we're installing that. Alrighty, while we're on the topic of vacuums, the reason I bought this one is it came with a, a place on the shaft to connect this little thing and then it came with a wall hanger and obviously a charger. I'm a vacuum snob. I have Dyson at home and then I have all the iRobots uh, or Roombas if you will. And I was really on the fence, you know, $400 vacuum for the camper. You know, the biggest cost in a vacuum is the battery. Now, we did always bring our Dyson with us when we went camping, but then I'd leave it in the camp and forget about it, and then I was looking for it at home. So this, I think I got on Black Friday special, definitely under 100 bucks. The battery is not gonna last forever, but we're dealing with a tiny footprint. That's why I decided to get a dedicated bat, uh, vacuum. Plug it into charge so we can use for the sink. All right, now on to this filter system. I filter the water coming into the tanks and then I filter the water going out of the tanks into here. We've drank the water in the tanks. Uh, we've never had a problem. That's why we have all of these. I also have tested the water, you know, um, every time a big trip to make sure there's nothing in the tanks. I do clean the tanks every now and then. So the water system is a huge part 
of camping. This uh, camper has a lot of fresh water storage and we like to drink the water here. That way we don't take up uh, fridge space. So we're filtering it many different times. Anyways, that's why I'm installing this. So I'm going to open this, see what we're working with. And then it's somehow gonna fit all the way in there. Ooh. That was close. All right, so this is the same one. I had a couple comments uh, saying, this is everything you did to your lost camper. And yes, this is everything I did to my lost camper. Why change something that's working? The only reason I'm doing these videos is so I can share with you my rationale and thoughts. This takes me four or five or six times longer to make the videos to show you what I'm doing. Because I gotta move the camera, edit the video. I could just install it. But hopefully you're finding this stuff helpful. But anyways, same one in my other camper, never had a problem with it. Comes with the separate drinking nozzles that will go next to the sink, but let's see what's in here. So this is everything it comes with. And another reason I buy this is because it comes with absolutely everything. So this faucet here, I will put right here. The reason for here is my kids are getting to the age where they can fill their own water bottle so they can reach from here. If I put it here, obviously it's out of the way, but then my kids can't reach. So this should be perfect right there. This is the whole apparatus. Water comes in on one side and out the other side. I will figure that out in a bit. Comes with all the piping. This is to replace the filters. It's a wrench. It comes with a nice cutting blade to cut the pipe. Comes with the shut off. It comes with everything guys. This is uh, perfect. So since I'm a big guy and that's a small closet, I'm gonna do this and I'll show you once it's done and I'll explain everything then. This is uh, plastic, whatever, on here. Now it's melted a little bit up. I did get a Zacto blade with this whole set. As I've mentioned, everything that comes with all these accessories is useful many times uh, uh, for different modifications. But I don't want to use that until I cut the pipe. Um, but I do have this Zacto blade. So I will use this blade just to flush out this hole because you want this to sit flush, right? Otherwise it's gonna wobble and all of that fun stuff. So I'm gonna do this and then show you the hole. Alrighty. And there we go. This actually comes with a base here in case you built a bigger hole, in case you drilled a bigger hole or in case you chipped some of the top off, it actually fits nicely. So that's the start to starting this. So now I know where this is located. Now I can go underneath and figure out how all the plumbing goes. All right, guys, one thing I knew in the back of my head, but uh, I didn't really register, is this connection obviously is not a regular home connection. So this is a regular home connection with a T going off into the pipe. So I'm gonna go look at my other RV and see what I use because I remember this now and then I'm gonna run to the hardware store and get a different one of these or whatever I did I'll let you know so you know but I'm gonna assume every RV is a bit different here all right guys let me show you what I purchased so what we're working with is a half inch uh, pipe but this connection is 3 8 so I've got a half inch male to male to go into here then I got a 3 8 to half inch pipe. I went with a pipe so I have more working area to go from here to the male connection on the half inch. So this will work out perfectly. I'm gonna go under and get that all installed. Alrighty guys, here's the connection. So there's all of it. Here's the T. This is just for the water filter. Now, <laughs> this worked out perfectly. I don't need to screw this in. That actually fits right between the sink and the wall. As well, since I'm gonna have this camper for a long time, I am going to make this pipe long enough where I can pull this out and service it. So let me cut this pipe. I'll show you, you meant to cut it straight. This is the blade they gave me and I'll show you how it connects right here. So it's just a straight, simple cut like that. Alrighty, so you want just a straight cut there. Now this is the inlet. This is a pressure regulator, so it makes sure the water pressure going into the filters is between 60 and 50 PSI. So that just pushes in there. This just pushes in here. That's all done. Now we're gonna work on 
this side, which is the outlet. The outlet to the actual faucet. Pretty simple. You just push this in, and now this connects to the faucet. So let's figure out how to do that. Alrighty, and it's all done, guys. So that is the faucet. That is how it's gonna sit. I'm not even gonna screw it to the wall yet. All of these stuff will hold it in place and it's pretty well jammed between here and the wall, so it worked out perfectly. Now, I can't test it because we are winterized, but I wanna address a couple things. Firstly, this thing needs to be winterized as well. If you leave water in here, it is going to crack and break. I do not winterize with the pink stuff. I just use compressed air. So what I do at the city water fill, I put an air compressor in, I set it to 55 PSI, and then I go find the furthest water outlet, a faucet, and then I'll turn that on. And then that water, the PSI will push the water out. Same thing here. I will make sure there's PSI of air coming in, and then I'll just turn this on, and I'll let it drain out of all the filters. It's been two years, and I've camped in extreme temperatures, and I on and off three or four or five times a year of winterizing and not and that's always been fine another thing I couldn't show you back there is when you use these connections you know I've already gone over this it's straightforward you just push them in now I'm gonna put you down and show you something so it's straightforward and pushes in now to get it out you just pull this portion down and it just pops off but that can happen when you don't want it to. So it comes with these locks and you just slip the lock in there and then that won't happen. So I put all the locks in under the cabinet already. All right, one more kitchen mod. A nice little mat for comfort. That is gonna wrap up my kitchen mods. There will be more as it goes, but these are the essentials I believe everyone needs. Water filter, something for the drying the dishes, some utensils, paper towel, roll holder is a must. You always need paper towels. And then we will see what other things I need along the way. But these are the things I did to my other camper and I know I need them now. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And until next time, I'll see you then because we got a couple more videos to go. Oh, almost forgot. I installed this handle here for my daughter to climb up. And then I just put another one here for my little man because this is still pretty high for a three-year-old so hopefully that helps so now I'll see you next time